Parental discretion is advised for the following program. The Now and Then Show with your host, Odd Bob Avery, is made possible by grants from the following businesses. King of Hearts, Goldsmith, maker of fine handcrafted jewelry. Menage a Trois, custom videography, photography, and design here on the North Coast. PM's Cafe, late night eats for late night people. John Chamberlain, signs, murals, advertising, now located at Casper Inn in beautiful downtown Casper. And the Casper Inn, the finest liquor and live entertainment in Mendocino County, featuring Tuesday night, the Nigerian All-Stars. If you appreciate the presentation of the following program and would like to see it continue, then please send your contribution to the Now and Then Show. Appearing out of the fog of local obscurity, rising above the dilemma of economic insecurity, anxiously awaiting the melodic ring of those three little words, we're all here to say, live from Mendocino, it's the Now and Then Show. Starring that prism of talent, the oddest of all Bobs, Odd Bob Avery, with live music provided by the Now and Then Orchestra. I'm Meg Harris, inviting you to stay tuned for the next 90 minutes and enjoy Bob's Libra guests, artist Ken Michelson, musician Monique Timberlake, businessman Peter Wells, masseuse Judy Fuente, artist businessman Matt Rowland. Also, original first works by this year's ROP, video students, and a very special musical guest, just back from England, Rockin' Richard Feenbaugh. And now, here he is, a man who just can't help but wonder how Librans can continue to stay happy through times of turmoil and social stress, Odd Bob Avery! All right, well, welcome. What a great audience tonight. Hi, Meg. Hi, Bob. How are you? Hello, Ben. And? Hello, Bob. <laughs> I don't like it. It's programmed well so far. And welcome. We have a great show lined up for you. We've got uh, a lot of Libras for some obscure reason. And uh, we're going to find out what it's like to be a Libra and what it's like for a Libra to live in Mendocino and environs. We have uh, Ken Michelson here who's going to show us some of his wildlife art, which is incredible stuff. We have Monique Timberlake here who's going to be using this instrument you saw in the uh, earlier shot. Yeah, okay, and we've got Peter Wells who's going to be here shortly. He's going to talk to us about uh, some of the business aspects of Mendocino. We have Judy Fuente who's going to do a little surprise number on me a little while later on. <laughs> and I hope she's gentle. <laughs> oh, did I say something wrong? I hope not. <laughs> I want her to be nice to me. And who did I forget? I forgot somebody. I forgot uh, Matt Rowland, who's here and does a lot of our background work and is a superb potter. And we've got some shots of one of his uh, plate shows. And did I leave anybody out? No, I didn't. I think I got them all, didn't I? No, Richard Feenbach. Oh, say yes. Sorry, Richard. I almost forgot you. Anyway, we'll be back with them and a lot more right after we take this short break. Hi, this is Meg Harris. We're out on the streets of beautiful Mendocino. It's a great day today. 
overlooking a view that makes me happy to be alive along with everyone else around here. Everybody seems to be in good spirits. We're going to be asking some exciting questions today. Uh, people walking around, plenty of them, so let's go look for our first person. Do you live in Mendocino? Um, yeah. Do you love it here? Uh, it has its moments. <laughs> <laughs> what are some things you like about living here? Um, what I like living here is that I get to leave sometimes, and that is what the best thing about living here is. Where yeah. do you go when you leave? Um, to the city or to Santa Rosa or um, the, geographically as far away from here as possible. <laughs> <laughs> Are you, have you bought any lottery tickets? Um, no, I don't subscribe to the belief that that's a wise investment, <laughs> so. Are you a Libra by any chance? Um, no, an Aries, actually. Aries. My best friends are Libras. Your best friends are Libras? Yes. What kind of people are they? Um, How would you describe them? Um, very flamboyant, outrageous people that I love hanging out with. That's great. Thank you. Sure. Hi, I'm Fed. And this is my lovely assistant, Rita. Today we're going to learn how to make Aunt Mary's upside down cake. Don't ask me what that is because I, I haven't made it yet. Okay, first you're going to need your stuff. Okay, you need two eggs and crack them in a large bowl. <laughs> and you need some baking soda. Just take as much as you want to make a physical. <laughs> And then you're all ready. And then you need enough flour. My lovely assistant Reed will bring that, that in because I'm too lazy today. And then you pour as much flour as you need into the bowl. <clears throat> that should be enough. Give it about 200 strokes, but if you don't have enough time on television like me, 10's enough. Then you need a little hydrogen peroxide. And some cooking sherry. <clears throat> this stuff works good while cooking cakes. Uh, and then it's all ready to put in the oven. <laughs> hey, the clock on the wall says it's time to go. And I've got a kind of a mess here on my hands to clean up. And i got to go a little early, so bye. <laughs> Here we are. Yay. You guys get better every week. That's wonderful. All right, we're back, and we're going to uh, talk a little bit about tonight's show, and uh, then we're going to read some letters from home, which is always fun, and then we're going to be back with our first guest this evening. So uh, you did some research on Libras, didn't you, Mary? Well, I did a little bit of research, Bob, but every book I read said a, something different about characteristics of Librans. And so what I gathered so far in the four days I spent doing it was that Librans tend to be pretty well-balanced personalities. They don't tend to be real mood swingers. And they have a real knack for concentration. And if they want to do something, they do it. They set their mind and do it. Uh, they make nice husbands and wives. Really? If you can get one to marry you. That's what I was going to ask. Yeah. That's Most of the Libras I know are so single. Oh, <laughs> well, there's an exception or two here tonight, however. Oh, okay. It's great to be so here. they're go-getters and they're doers and they're fairly well-grounded people and they are creative, a lot of them, too, right? Like creative, especially in music. In music, especially. Yes. Like Gemini's are more creative, I guess, as, uh, as fine artists and that sort of thing. Okay, well, we have a bunch of Libras here tonight to look sure at, do. but uh, let's take a look at the letters from home right now and 
see what kind of kind comments people have been sending us this week. This one is real short and right to the point. Dear Bob, who decides what kind of show you present? This comes from Jan Gorski in Cleone, California. Well, Jan, uh, in the beginning it was a dictatorship. Michael uh, Evans, our producer, would decide exactly what was going to happen, and then it uh, usually didn't, you know. <laughs> so, uh, in, in recent days... Oh, yeah. <laughs> In recent days, it's sort of been a uh, collaborative effort. Uh, Bugs and Garth and uh, Michael and myself and Meg and uh, whoever else wants to get involved kind of kick a bunch of ideas around and then we come up with the format for a show. So that's what's happening now and who knows where it's going to go from there. But uh, thanks for the question. Dear Bob, is there something wrong with the eyes of the Now and Then Orchestra? Why are they always wearing sunglasses? <laughs> that's uh, Just Curious Ray from Mendocino. Well, Ray, uh, I haven't been able to figure it out myself. There are a lot of theories floating around, uh, <laughs> among other things. But uh, it's gotten to be a trademark of the band, and uh, they like to be seen on the street with their sunglasses. So if you see somebody walking down the street with the sunglasses on, you can ask them if they're one of the now and then band members. <laughs> Bound to get some interesting responses. This comes from Big Spender. It says, Dear Truly Odd Bob, one point that was never brought up on the last show, the weed show, was the fact that the pot industry does some good in the local community. For example, the boutique business is flowing with endless outfits. Gone are the days of beads and blanket-looking clothing. We have very fashionable-looking locals around here now. Also, mouths get fed from endless food shops in the town, and Mendocino looks like it's doing very well. Is this just because of the tourists, or is it uh, high bank charges on bounced checks? <laughs> Sincerely, big spender, P.S., your choice in ties leaves something to be desired. Well, because <laughs> I didn't wear a tie tonight, so uh, I let Meg wear the tie well, I wore tonight. tonight. <laughs> and uh, we didn't plan this. We don't even read these ahead of time, so take that, big spender. <laughs> I hope you'll like mine. I love your tie, well, what I can you. see of it. I mean, I, thank you. I saw a little bit of it there. Dear Bob, just wanted to write and commend you on your perseverance in the pursuit of excellence in broadcast programming. I look forward to each of the Now and Then shows and wish I could see them more often. What is the limiting factor concerning the number of shows you do a month? Thanks for the good times. Al Brown, Albion, California. Well, Al, the uh, limiting factor is uh, fairly straightforward. It's a matter of uh, availability of the people that do the shows. We're all volunteers. Nobody here gets paid. They're all part of the ROP uh, video program. And uh, we are in great debt to everyone who works on the show. And I hope you'll stick around to the end of this show so you can read the credits and see exactly all the number of people that are involved. And that's it for the letters from home tonight. And we thank you. If you have a, a letter or a comment and would like to write to us at the Now and Then show, we will show you an address later on. And you can do just that. And we would like to hear from you, too. Okay, we're going to take a short break. And we'll be back with our first guest, writer and artist Ken Michelson. <laughs> Mendocino? No, we're from uh, Marin County. Marin County. You're up San here for San the weekend? Mm -hmm. San Anselmo. It's pretty mm -hmm. there. Uh, do you like Mendocino? Is it the first well, time? No, we've been up here several times. I just love it up here. Mm. Yeah. Beautiful. Great place. Great place to stay. What do you like the most about Mendocino? Uh, coastline, uh, the uh, hotels and motels. Yeah, real nice place to stay up here. Have you bought any lottery tickets? Mm-hmm. Probably more than I should, but... <laughs> did you win anything? No, I only had a couple of $2 winners, so that's about, that's about as we did. And you bought more tickets with the $2 oh, winners? sure. Yeah. Sure. Okay. What's your astrological sign? Um, gee, Scorpion. Scorpio. Do you know any Libras? No. No. Yeah. Really not into uh, astrological signs. <laughs> okay, thank you. Okay, thanks. <laughs> Have you ever been to Mendocino? No, it's our first time no. here. What do you like the best about it here? So far, the ocean. The ocean, of course. <laughs> Beautiful. Are right, you going to be spending the night here? Uh, for Bragg, I think, yeah. What's your astrological signs? Sagittarius. Virgo. Virgo. Do you happen to know any Libras? This is Libra month, you know. Oh, no, I don't. No, no. <laughs> I don't think so. No. Have you bought any lottery tickets? 
Yes. Yeah? yeah. And we have a one? No. <laughs> not not a thing, huh? Oh, $2, $2. I did. Two dollars. Two dollars. Well, that's good. You going to continue to buy lottery sure. tickets? Yeah, We're sure. good. We plan to win. That's the spirit. <laughs> Thank you very much. You're welcome. Here we are again. Yay. Yeah. These guys are hot. I love them. Right now, I'd like to uh, bring in a good friend and uh, a person who is an extremely talented wildlife artist. His name is Ken Michelson, and he has uh, been the winner of several duck stamp competitions. Uh, and this, for those of you who don't know what a duck stamp is, is a competition which is sponsored every year by the government of states and federal and many many thousands of artists submit work for these things and the one who is chosen has to really uh, have achieved something to get to that point so right now i'd like to bring ken michelson out here have you meet him and we'll talk about some of his work ken <laughs> hi buddy hi, how are you good to see you meg harris have a seat well i'm delighted to get you on the show i know how you feel about being on television <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well, you're a, a grounded Libra and a creative person. You've been up here, what, how many years? About 15. 15 years? Yeah. And uh, as I recall, you weren't always doing wildlife art, were you? That's for sure. What got you started? I came up here on uh, uh, doing a lot of commercial art. And, uh, well, uh, one of our dear friends told me about the duck stamp. Who was that? Um, J.D. Mayhew. Oh, he's into everything. <laughs> <laughs> he said he heard about it on the radio, the California uh, contest. Right. And so uh, I decided to give it a try. I got some forms and gave it a try. And there were a great big 56 in that one. So That's all? <laughs> yeah, that was the, fir the first California Open contest. Oh, I didn't realize and that. And hardly anybody knew about it. And so how long ago was that? <laughs> that was 78. The, the 78 stamp, they call it 78, 79, because it right. slops over into huh. another year. So. And it's come that far since then, so that there are now several thousand artists That's right. doing this yeah, it's thing, right? very popular. Now, you won that once, and then, then again, did you win it? No, I won the California, and uh, then I decided to try the next year's uh, federal. I had no idea that these contests were going on anywhere. So uh, I decided to give the, uh, the federal a try. Hmm. And there were, at that time, uh, about 375 entries. And uh, lo and behold, it came around again. I got the 7980 on that one. Wow. wow. So you've won how many, how many comps? Two. The two. Yeah. The two. Federal and the state. Right. That's quite remarkable. And right on top of one another, too, one yeah. year after the I think the that's uh, pretty good for a lifetime. I'm, I'm still going to keep trying, but... Uh, well, yeah, I've, you brought a piece tonight that I want to show the people at some point. I don't know what they have on camera right now, but... Uh, you brought a piece that you said was a reject for this year's oh, yeah. competition, one that you weren't happy with and you, uh, you wanted to mm -hmm. send something else, right? This is the one. Okay, this picture, I don't think you can see the detail in this at home, but this painting is extraordinarily oh, so finely detailed, and Ken told me uh, a little while ago that he had personally rejected this one because it didn't think it was up to snuff, and he went and spent an agonizing, what, three or four days to crank out a, another one to send to the competition right. and oh man. We turned a minute just the last one was there. I mean I would kill for a painting like that. Oh, That's amazing. Really and you just rejected it. Thank you Bob. Yeah. Yeah they have to be very strong these days. There's 2,099 entries last year so. But the stakes are quite high too aren't they? Yeah. The stakes yeah what, are, what are you talking about if you win a competition? Well like the government that? doesn't give you anything but a sheet of stamps that is, is signed by the Secretary <laughs> of the Interior. <laughs> <laughs> no prize there except for that. that that's that's kind of nice. But what happens is, it's your you retain the copyright, so you can go out and print the thing. And the print numbers, since there's so many collectors going on now, are up to about thirty thousand prints. And when I won it in, in seventy nine eighty, uh, I I published um, ninety two hundred prints. Now there's around thirty thousand, as I just said. And so each of those prints is worth money. And there's a lot of collectors out there. It right. seems to be the hottest that's print. Great. So that's how you realize uh, something out of the competition, is it gets you this opportunity to publish the, uh, the print. And we have an example. There's one on the screen right now. Oh, of, uh, which one is this now? Was this that's the, the Federal. Uh, that's the 7980 Federal. 
that uh, that's uh, duck is called a uh, green wing teal. Mm -hmm. right. That's a pair of them there. Now you also did some work for the Franklin Mint, which came out of uh, your work with these duck stamps, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, there were many spin-offs from this. It's really a wonderful thing to witness. And didn't you tell me one time that your print that you had done for the Franklin Mint was the biggest selling single item that the Franklin Mint had ever produced? Well, one of the prints was. Yeah, my first print with them uh, was a, you know, think I about did a what series of prints. Yeah. You're talking a lot of stuff because the Franklin Mint, as all of you know from seeing ads everywhere in the world for various and sundry coinage and, and chess sets and so forth. They also have these prints. So for you to have done something that sold more than anything else is pretty extraordinary. They have a fine program, the Frank Franklin Mint, and they treat the artist well. And so I, I did many projects for them. Well, that's nice to know. Yeah, I'm very lucky on that. So you feel good about uh, I, I feel about great about work. Oh, I would. What, uh, what keeps you here in Mendocino? Because <coughs> as an independent artist and with that sort of notoriety, it seems to me you could live anywhere you wanted to. Well, we love it here. Yeah, you're right. We could possibly probably live anywhere we want to, <laughs> within reason. But we just love the area, and so we stay here. Do you think some of the things that are happening in uh, Mendocino will uh, will change your mind about living here? I mean, a lot of people are concerned that the direction the community is going is detrimental. How do you feel about oh, that? Oh, no. I, I think it's great right now. I don't know what the future holds, but I think it's wonderful. It's beautiful. But you're not offended by some of the controversial projects that are underway right now or any of that business? Well, very close. There are a couple of them on the verge of making me you know, a little teed off, but I don't know. I just sit back and watch. Meg, you had a question? I met your wife earlier before the show started. Is she an artist oh, yeah. as well? Yeah. She's Does she like birds? We work together. Too? Oh, that's great. Well, she paints horses. Horses? Mm How -hmm. oh, nice. Are there any yeah. kinds of competitions for horses that, like there are for ducks, that sort of thing? Well, not yet. Not yet? You're going to create one? We're going to start one, yeah. <laughs> That's a good idea. Yeah, there's the Libra the coming out. the first horse stamp, okay? <laughs> <laughs> I have Which end of the stamp? horse? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she paints both ends very well. All right. <laughs> <laughs> what, uh, <laughs> what medium do you use in your, in your work? Well, I use a form of tempera called gouache. Uh -huh. Whenever I, I qualify that, because whenever I say gouache to anybody, they say, why? You know? <laughs> Do you have any tips for uh, would be uh, artists out there that would that like to follow in your gouache? footsteps? Yeah. Well, not necessarily in gouache, but uh, you might say why you chose that and what they might do if they're interested in wildlife. Well, all I can say is you need to study the animals, the beasties, a lot before you start. And yeah, you've <laughs> done that, I know, over the years. Yeah. I've watched you out there crawling around with your camera. And Right. Slogging around in the mud. Mm -hmm. Take many, many field trips with the camera. Did we have a look at the other piece that Ken brought yet? I didn't have a chance to see. We did. Okay. Well, Ken, I'd like to thank you very much for being on the show with us tonight. Thanks. And uh, I understand that you have to go to another commitment this evening, but uh, too bad you can't stick around and dance with us a little later on. If you get finished with what you're doing, come on back and party with us because we're going to have fun a little later. We're going to dance on Your the show. Your work is wonderful. Yeah. Thanks so nice much for having me on. All right. Yeah. We're going to be right back. We're going to take a short break right now, and then we'll be back with our next couple of guests right here on the Now and Then Show. So stick around. Are you from Mendocino? Yeah. I lived am. here a long time? Yeah, I've lived here about eight years. Do you like it here? Yeah, I really like it. I wouldn't want to live anywhere else. <laughs> you wouldn't want to live anywhere else? No. What do you like else. the best about Mendocino? Oh, um, everyone's really nice and I mean there's like no one ever glares at you. You don't have to worry about fights or anything. It's just everyone is really mellow. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, I, I do. Along with everyone. Well that's that's great. Do you have you bought any lottery tickets? <laughs> you plan to buy some lottery tickets? I don't know. I might sometime if I have some extra money. <laughs> You're lucky. Do you, are you usually a lucky person? Yeah. I've won stuff before and stuff. I don't know. I'm lucky. <laughs> What's your astrological sign? I'm an Aries. You're an Aries. That's the second Aries I've had today. Do you happen to know any Libras? No, I don't know any Libras, really. <laughs> October is Libra. October? Oh, actually, I do. I know this one girl. She's a Libra. She lives in Fort Bragg. It's really nice. <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> Sometimes, huh? Yeah, we usually get along. <laughs> Have you ever seen the Now and Then show? No, I don't think so. 
I might have. <laughs> well, it's on Tuesday. I don't watch very much TV. You don't watch very much television? We don't have a TV. I see. Well, thank you very much. You too. Yeah. Bye. Hi, I'm Karen. This is Meg. I'm going to show you how to do a simple haircut. And these are some of the things you're going to need to use. Okay, these are what I call thinning scissors. They're called thinning scissors because they don't cut every hair. And these are just normal hair cutting scissors. Most barbers use them. And it's just a comb. So, okay, I usually take the scissors and cut the hair in upward motion instead of side to side. Because if you do it side to side, then it comes out looking choppy. Thinning scissors are good if you want to have some long hair and some short hair. Don't forget my tail. I won't. <laughs> Is it long enough for a braid yet? Mm, let me see. No. Seems to be getting shorter. <laughs> have you been No. You been cutting it? No. No, unless a stranger came in the middle of the night and cut it. Don't cut it off. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Do you want like a round haircut shorter? I think so. Okay. Do you? Yeah, I think around so. Around the ears? Mm-hmm. It kind of hangs down yeah, a little bit too long. Yeah, it More. What do you think? Chop it all off. <laughs> Why don't you just get the razor and just, let's shave it. What okay. do you think? Okay. Sure, we'll give you a little mohawk. Maybe leave one spike in the middle. <laughs> yeah. Okay, what I have done is I've gone from the back, the lower back, worked my way up, and I go to the sides, take the sides, and I cut them shorter, of course. And you say this part gets kind of yeah. wild, huh? Yeah. Okay. And once you get to be a professional with your own salon, you can get the, those real soft, furry brushes with the baby powder on the back of the neck. It gets rid of all the hair, uh -huh. like the fancy places do. Oh, wait a minute. This is a fancy place. <laughs> okay. Am I done? I think so. How's it look? <laughs> Meg, I want to ask you a question. Uh, how was it getting your hair cut? Oh, it's always exciting when I get my hair cut. I always feel like a new person. Yeah? Lately, I've been thinking about growing it out. What do you think? Mm, I don't know. I, I've never known you with long hair, so I really have no yeah? objective opinion. I like it the way it is, frankly. Yeah. I think they it's did a great easy. job. Well, the girl, that, the girl that does it... Hey, Karen, if you're watching, mm -hmm. I need a haircut. <laughs> I think I'll just keep it short. Shorter? Yeah. yeah Maybe a those. mohawk. Oh, why not? Yeah. Why yeah. not? It's rad, rad. Maybe rad. just rad. bald except for the bangs. <laughs> I like that. You guys, the band are <laughs> yeah. Okay, we're going to uh, introduce our next guest right now, a very, very talented musician and a very beautiful person in many, many ways, and someone who's known to a lot of you locally. Uh, she's been a bartender on the coast, and a lot of you have met her that way, but. She is a, a really good musician, and that's an aspect of, of Monique Timberlake that a lot of you are not familiar with. So right now I'd like to have you give a listen to Monique, and she's going to play a song for us that she has written herself. So Monique, take it away.
Timberlake. Dynamite. I have forgotten, I think, what the title of that song was. Is it Spring Mountain, Spring Morning, when he, what was it? Uh, morning Dream. Morning Dream, thank you. I was close, right? All right. Monique will be back with us uh, in a little while when the uh, Libras start partying at the, toward the end of our show here. In a minute here, I'd like to introduce uh, Peter Wells to you, who is uh, going to talk to us about a variety of things. Peter's uh, Peter's in the studio somewhere, wandering around, but we'll get him squared away in a minute, and then we'll have a chance to talk to him. Um, I have a, just wondering off the top of my head if there are any uh, Libras on the show tonight whose birthday it is tonight. Does anyone know if any of our Libras are celebrating a birthday tonight? Anybody over there? No, none of our guests are birthdays. <laughs> just <We have> <laughs> undertone, undercurrent. Anybody within the week? Within the week? Within the last two weeks. Or the next yeah. yeah, okay, that's where it's at. Yeah. Two weeks ago was where all of the heavy crush of Libra birthdays were. Okay, I think Peter's uh, squared away and ready to come on out now. So I'd like to introduce you at this time to businessman and uh, many other things which we'll get into. Peter Wells. Peter? Hello, Meg. Have a seat. Well, here we are on the. National Television, floor. by golly. This is uh, CBJ Television. Downtown Mendocino. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know a lot about downtown Mendocino. You've been here quite a while, haven't you? Uh-huh. How long have you lived in town? Uh, 14 years. Really? About the same as you. Yeah, well, I see. I've been here 16 years. 16 years, yeah. yeah. But I, you've lived in town. I just moved into town. So <laughs> treat me. <laughs> Tell us what it's like to be uh, a creative person and live in the village of Mendocino. I know you have some feelings about that. <laughs> <laughs> a creative person living in the village of Mendocino. Yeah, because a lot of well, creative people don't live in town deliberately. You know, actually, you have no choice. Living in Mendocino, you have to be creative, right? I suppose that's true. To make yeah. a living in, Men in Mendocino is, I mean, that is one of the most difficult tasks in the world, probably. I'll go with that. Because nobody <laughs> came here to make a living. That's right. Right? I mean, everybody came here to get away from somewhere else. Yeah. And then eventually had to make a living. Yeah, well, that sort of goes hand in so, hand with existence. You have to... You actually, have to just to make it. a living. Right, guys? Just to make a living yeah. here is fantastic. Yeah. I mean, that is the most that you can do, actually. Make a living. Well, that's really all you can need. You make isn't more it? than a living, actually. Yeah, I mean, if you're satisfied with making a living, that's really all you need, I think. If you, most of us who came here took a tremendous cut in whatever we were doing just to have the opportunity to be here and it really doesn't matter a whole lot just because uh, you know if you're not making what you were making before because you have so much more here that's that's better yeah, you, you you had a television series in england for a while which was kind of a blast for you and then you uh you got into writing some music and some songwriting and uh performing to some extent and you you have a successful business a restaurant the albion river inn and you do a lot of things, both business, a restaurant, the Albion River Inn, and you do a lot of things. So your survival it seems to be more of a function of doing for you than, than money at this point. Yeah. All right. Boy, that's what quite was a mouthful. Your, what was the television series? What was that? Uh, well, that was when I was, when I was a young man, Meg. You're not anymore. No. <laughs> uh, Oh, go on. Come on. Come on. <laughs> oh, maybe I am, really. <laughs> anyway, I was on a television series in England a long time ago. And uh, I was all right. But, you know, like the show that was, which you were in last, this last week that was on national and television. You too, yeah, right? I too. Wrote. But I was reminded of that because, like, watching it was sort of weird. It was sort of embarrassing. And the thing about it is that. If you could be in a show that was exactly what you wanted to say, that's one thing. But to be like a puppet moved around and used and sold to sell soap or whatever is a little different, you know? We all did it willingly. I mean, it's fun. It's yeah. fun. Anyway. You got to but, look at it that way. Okay. All right. What, what, in your series that you had, I hate to keep pressing that one, but I'm curious myself. What, you were a policeman? Is that what you were in this? I was a, yeah, I was a, a novice policeman. And I was in a show where this other guy, Jack Warner, was the ultimate London Bobby, who never, you know, who was like the kindly, friendly guy who helped everybody in the neighborhood. And I was the young cop who made all kinds of goofs. So it was very <laughs> thrilling to watch 
every Saturday evening. Well, when I first met you, we were, we were close to the, our first meeting was when we did Oliver here in Mendocino in, what, 1973, was it? Or 74? Yeah, 73. 73, and you played Sykes, which was sort of an extension of the kind of thing that you did on your television show. I think you told me that at the time. It was time. the other side of it. He was the criminal, right? Right, but it was still a comedic yeah. kind of a, a performance. <coughs> and you got to use your accent and your, and your experience, and I was very impressed with your acting. Now, all of a sudden, you're a businessman and not an actor anymore. I wonder what it was like or what, what made you go through all the transitions from being a successful actor to owning a restaurant on the Mendocino Coast. Well, I wasn't that successful an actor. I, I, I mean, <laughs> it, wasn't, it wasn't like I, I was an actor and very glad to be an actor. I wasn't. I came, I came up here just the same way as I said, just to sort of get away from everywhere else and to just to be alone and quiet and just sort of figure things out. And enjoying it here, it was then necessary to make a living here. You know, I didn't really want to go back and be a competitor in the rat race, okay. right? Rat race. Uh, so you became so a competitor I enjoy in this rat race? No, I don't feel a competitor here. Well, I, isn't the restaurant business kind of a competitive situation up here? No, I don't see it that way. I see it that what you're trying to do is you're trying to put something together that works, you know, where everybody benefits from it and that it works so that everybody, all the employees get paid, all the... Uh, Hooray! Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> but so that everybody actually benefits from the transaction. And they certainly do. The they restaurant good is wonderful, if I, you don't mind me giving you a little plug. It's one of, the, one of the best on the coast, I think. What do you see in the future from, uh, from your Libra standpoint? What do I see in the future? Yeah, for Mendocino, um, for the coast, for uh, for the way things are going here, you must have some feelings about it. Well, I know it's sort of interesting. Like I think, uh, actually, I think it's interesting what you've done. It's not like, fair. No, no. no I'm, <laughs> I'm asking not, you the question. No, no. I'm, I'm, I'm. But it's. I think what you've done is an interesting thing. It's like you've moved into town, and you've you've made a residence out of a property that was actually a commercial property. That's true. Yeah. And you've, you're, so this is a move that makes, that kind of really states to everybody that, that Mendocino is a place to live rather than a place to turn into a commercial jackpot. I'd like to see it stay there. And I think that's great. Community. And I think that's, I think we could, I think the main point is that we enjoy living here and we'd be able to make a living here, but enjoy living here, you know? Yeah. And everybody should be able to do that. That would be the ultimate well, we should be able to do it. The utopian, <laughs> should. The utopian. We could put a big point. fence around yeah. Mendocino. Oh, no. Well, we could just close it for remodeling, you know. Right. <laughs> just, oh, that would satisfy everybody, you know. Left. Okay, so you don't have any big bombshells to drop on us about. Um, about what? The future of Mendocino. Yeah. About the future of Mendocino? Yeah. What would you okay. like to see it be? A, a, I think, a, a, okay, what do I think? I think that... Uh, it's like the old uh, ancient Chinese fellow, Chang Su, I think, said that, uh, you know him, don't you, Bunch? <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's about this tall and yeah. stooped. Yeah. <laughs> the, uh, <laughs> the more you value the thing, the more you leave it alone. Yeah. And that, like, Mendocino is a very, very precious and valuable object. And the less you meddle with it, the better off we all are. Here, here. That's yeah. I think that's the absolute truth. All right, we I see have to take a little break right here, and then we will be back uh, with our next set of guests. Peter, I'd like to thank you very much, and you're going to stay with us and uh, party a little bit later on, aren't you? Good. All right, great. Thanks again. Yeah. We'll be right back. Oh, well, don't go away. No, no, don't don't go away. Oh. <laughs> Have you ever been to Mendocino before? No, this is our first time we've been up. It's you, really great. It's really great. Yeah, very relaxing, really enjoying it, great weather, just perfect. I love it too. Are you going to be staying here all weekend? Yes, we're 
here today and tomorrow, and we're going to be heading back tomorrow afternoon. Don't be surprised if you don't want to leave when it's time to go. I know. I've already gotten that feeling now. <laughs> it's kind of like a second honeymoon for us, and it's just been everything everyone said it was. Very peaceful. The people are just so nice. Well, Have you bought any lottery tickets? Oh, yeah, I bought one about 10 minutes ago. It's, uh, <laughs> it's a reaction. Every time you go into one of those stores, the big L, you can't help but just get one. So far, I'm a little behind. I think I put in 10 and won five, so, but it's fun. It's a lot of fun, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Are you usually a lucky person? No. Lucky in love, <laughs> cards or gambling. <laughs> lucky in love? Yes. Well, that's nice, that's nice. What's your astrological sign? I'm a Sagittarian. Cancer. Do you know any Libras? October? Don't know any Libras. No, no, we don't. There's a lot of them out there. <laughs> <laughs> you, I gather you're a Libra. No, I'm not. <laughs> but there are a lot of Libras out there. Thanks a lot. Okay. Oh, thank, thank you. you. Good luck with your okay, show. Okay, thank you. Thanks for this nice town. Hi, I'm Rob Cheatham. This is my partner, Sam Sturgeon. We're here from Terminal Travel, checking out prospective spots. Nice hit, Bob. For uh, you more adventures in vacationers. Now right now we're down here in Beirut doing our best to have some fun on the back nine. That's right. And uh, we'd like to tell you this is a fine spot to vacation, nice resort vacation area. And uh, Jesus! Jesus. Whew. At least it's not as bad as Belfast. But we got another nice package tour. So you well, all come down. Well, I'm going to off here, Rob. You all come down and see us at Terminal Travel. Bob, I see you coming back. See you in Kabul. Bye bye. Have you ever seen the Now and Then show before? Yes, I have. A lot, almost everyone. All right. Do you like it? I love it. It's funny. It has all the people I know from Mendo. <laughs> I love to hear that. What's your sign? I'm a Taurus. A Libra. Libra. All right, we've got a Libra here. <laughs> How would you describe yourself as a Libra? I mean, are oh, you a typical Libra? I suppose you could say I'm a typical Libra. I'd yeah. <laughs> What's a typical Libra? What is a typical Libra? Right? I was just about to ask you that myself. Um, gosh, I don't know. <laughs> Pretty easy go. Are you pretty easy going yeah. person? Happy? I pretty? Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm glad we finally got a Libra. Oh, really? Been yeah. looking for Libras. In it. We've been looking They're for Libras around. all day. Search for Libras. So you're here for? You live in Mendocino, I take it. Yeah. <laughs> do you, and do you love it here? Oh yeah. Yeah, it's pretty nice. It's my favorite place of all the places I've been. It's home anyway. Yeah. That's great. Thanks a lot. Bye. Okay. Bye. Bye. Hi, I'm AJ, and I'm going to show you how to make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Now there are three things you need to make the sandwich. You need the jelly, you need the peanut butter, and you need bread. And then of course you need a knife to, to spread it with. So we'll use this. Now, you spread the peanut butter on the slice of bread. Now be sure you get a lot on that knife because we all know how good peanut butter is for you, especially when it's Jif. And now, for the jelly. I like to put the jelly on a separate piece of bread because then the taste is more defined. At least that's what Webster said. Whoa, we lost a little bit there. You can just scoop it out. I know that mommy wouldn't like that, but it is easier. And then just kind of spread it on, just like you would peanut butter. Okay. Now, you simply put the two pieces of bread together. And some people like to cut theirs in half. <laughs> and that way, you can share them with your best friend. Nope, 
Don't touch that knob, folks. This is still the Now and Then show. Carrying on the tradition of something for everybody on Now and Then, I would like to introduce you to our next Libra guest. This is teacher and massage therapist Judy Fuente, who is putting me in heaven right now, I want to tell you. <laughs> Judy, how are you tonight? I'm doing just fine, Bob. How are you doing? Oh, better by the <laughs> second, believe me. You have magical fingers. Thanks. Can you tell me something about the principle of massage? I mean, why is it that massage does what it does, makes you feel so good? Well, one of the things that it does is, of course, just relax the body, relax the muscles. But it also increases the blood circulation and the lymphatic circulation. And it just gives you a chance to experience touch, <laughs> <laughs> which is um, a real important thing to us humans. You bet. Yeah. I'll vote for that. Yeah. <laughs> need to be touched. You, you teach acupressure. Yeah, I teach Jin Shindo acupressure. Okay, what is that exactly? Um, Jin Shindo actually is a correlation of um, oriental therapeutics, um, including traditional acupuncture theory, and uh, dietary principles, um, massage and, and uh, relaxation techniques, and also techniques for meditation and breathing. And um, it's a correlation, actually, it's a kind of lifestyle or, or health art rather than um, just a massage technique. So it's a combination of all of those things to promote um, glowing, radiant health. <laughs> well, I'm all for that. Yeah. But in order to really tune yourself into massage and what it can do for you, you're talking about having to practice a, a decent diet and good yeah. other health practices besides just frying your brains out and going in for a massage every Monday morning. Huh? Right, or Friday afternoon. Or <laughs> getting right whatever whatever your weekend. cycle might be, right. <laughs> right, right. Um, yeah, in order to feel good, it includes um, breathing. That's the first thing I look at when I'm massaging a person. Is this body breathing? Is this person even breathing? This one isn't anymore. Yeah, this person breathes yeah. about 40% of his lung capacity. <laughs> I have no energy to breathe. Yeah. Bob um, made the mistake of carrying a chair on his head. <laughs> I was hoping you didn't mention that. <laughs> well, not everybody goes around carrying a chair on their head, but I was doing that last week, and my truck started to run away down the street by itself. So I started to put the chair down, and then instead of letting it drop, I picked the whole thing up with my head. <laughs> and oh, all of these shit. things back here, which she's doing such a wonderful job on, went pop. Oh. And it really works. Why does that work? How can you, what, why does massage help a damaged muscle? Well, usually when um, there's any kind of injury to the body, the musculature will just go into kind of a spasm or a holding pattern just to hold everything in place. You know, maybe the muscles think, well, there's an injury to the bone, I have to hold everything in place. So the muscles go into a pattern of, of holding, and sometimes that's necessary and sometimes it isn't. It's just a, tr a kind of a response to the trauma. And um, My whole body's a trauma. No? <laughs> <laughs> yes, but <laughs> that it's responding, it. it's responding. Oh, <laughs> so, um, there's hope. Yeah, there's hope. But, um, you know, so, so what the massage does is to relax the muscle and to release the stress toxins that accumulate in the muscles, you know, lactic acid and things like that, which are a normal uh, byproduct of muscle metabolism, actually can accumulate in the muscles, and it, it's what gives it that stiff, tight, um, painful feeling. Mm, so. That stiff, tight, painful feeling is going away rapidly. Right. This is wonderful. I can't recommend it <laughs> too much. I'm not in a position to see Meg the way I'm lying here on the stage. So if she has any questions, <laughs> she's staring at my toes. <laughs> yeah, well, with any injury, I think massage is really valuable. It's just a valuable tool just for going around and feeling good. It's a really good way for people to take better care of themselves and to just feel better. Is there any particular timetable you should put yourself on in terms of massage? I mean, well, don't I do it just when you're traumatized. Well, I think people should one every day. <laughs> Well, I'm going to vote for yeah. that one, too. Look, look at this. Can you dig this? This is one. Could you handle this every oh, day? I could do it, yeah. Probably so two or three I. times a day. 
Yeah, um, but really, I think I think once a week or once every other week is. I don't really see how people live <laughs> without getting massaged at least a couple times uh, a month. I don't either. But um, you know, just a, whatever you know, people need to to feel good. I think I think twice a month is a really good schedule to get on, just for maintenance and keeping everything loose and flexible, so that you don't get old before your time. <laughs> oh, I know that feeling. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, are you real busy? Is it, uh, you know, I mean. <laughs> you mean my practice? In my yes, practice? in your practice, yes. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing for the next three and a half years? Um, yes. um, yeah, I'm actually getting quite busy in my practice. I opened up an office here in Mendocino, and um, I don't do any advertising except for going on TV. Um, no, I don't do any advertising. This isn't really so it's an ad. <laughs> word of mouth. This is heaven. Yeah. I just by word of mouth. So my practice is building, and I also teach classes. I teach classes in acupressure. And so I am getting pretty busy. So it's a good idea to make an appointment. It's a great idea to make an appointment. Quite a bit ahead of time, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, okay, I'm going to fall asleep here in about two and a half seconds. So yeah, okay. we're going to take a short break, and then we'll be back with our next guest, Matt Rowland. Oh. Don't go away. Mendocino? Yes, I am. Yeah. Do you like Mendocino here? Oh yeah, I love it. I wouldn't be here. What do you like the most about this town? Oh, the water, the air. It's getting a bit too crowded for me. I, I can deal with living in the, in the woods. I can't deal with coming into town too much lately. But I don't leave because I love the ocean. I love living by the ocean. So do my kids. What's your sign? I'm a Pisces. Well, no wonder you like to be around the ocean, yeah, huh? Yeah, I, wouldn't, I hadn't thought about that. It makes a lot of sense, doesn't it? <laughs> yes, it does. Do you know any Libras? Yeah, my husband, my mother. Your husband and your mother yeah. is a Libra. How would you describe them? Extravagant, good-looking, extravagant. They love the nicer things in life. They're um, very, very nice people, though. People sort of flock around them like to be around them. Have you bought any lottery tickets? No, I haven't, but uh, somebody just told me today that they saw my name in the paper as a winner. Oh my God. And I dreamed I bought one last night, so I think I'd better go out and buy one. I think you should <laughs> go out and buy one right away. <laughs> Good luck to you. Thank, Thank you. you. Hi, friends. I'm Rob Cheatham. And I'm Sam Sturgeon. And we're, we're from, from Terminal, Terminal Travel. Travel. Now, we already told you about our exciting golf package. And for just a little bit more, Sam Sturgeon is here to tell you what else you can get on that fabulous world tour. Thanks, Rob. I'd like to tell you about our new package. Uh, we, we got tours of uh, famous cemeteries uh, all around the world. Very good prices. We can get you on these tours for almost nothing. I want to come over here. I want to show you something that you're going to like right now. Come on over here. Let's have a look at someone's famous grave. Here's a, a dead guy over here. Been dead for many years, uh, father of electricity. Uh, as you can see, it's a little overgrown here. They don't uh, treat old uh, Ben uh, Franklin too good anymore. Ben died uh, quite a few years back, and we all know his contributions to society. He's a, he was a fantastic man. And uh, actually, his name was Benjamin Franklin Higgins, a little known fact. Uh, they took the Higgins part off because it didn't look good. So they, that's, that's where that comes from. And Who else it, we got over here? Well, and see Rob over here. We got the uh, famous uh, kid writer, uh, Hans Christian Andersen. He wrote a lot of uh, novels and stuff back there, way back there. Yeah, he used to scare the hell out of little children, you know, Hansel and Gretel and everything. Why don't you get a shot of that there, uh, uh, Rob? And, you know, this is some of the stuff we offer you on the tour. Uh, it's, it's a fabulous deal, you know, very little money, very reasonable. You have a lot of fun. Now, uh, come on with me. We're going over to another fabulous gravesite. Uh, right here we have uh, P.T. Barnum found this man. This is uh, Tom Thumb's gravesite. Uh, it's here in uh, Philadelphia, and uh, Tom Thumb was about oh what, uh, about two hands, three hands high, little man, uh, but entertained the world with uh, 
by being a little tiny guy. Well, they it's, say this is the world's smallest grave, don't they there, Sam? Well, it is the world's smallest grave, uh, Rob, and uh, I'd like to just point out that, uh, indeed, Tom Thumb is in there. Uh, hold on a second. Let's see if he's home. Tom, you in there? Well, Tom, Tom's, you know, he's a little shy these days, but uh, we'll get through to him, you know, have a seance or something. Uh, so let's go on with our tour here of the famous grave sites. This is a fabulous deal. You ought to get some tickets uh, right away. Get on this tour. We're, right here we have the famous grave site of Benjamin Bailey, uh, P.T. Barnum's uh, partner's brother. Now, you never hear too much about Benjamin, but he was a famous guy, and he's dead now. So everyone should come and see this grave site. It's a real nice one. Uh, we'll go on to some others here. We're just having a look around. This is a fabulous deal. Get your, you know, get on it right now and get down here and, and go on tour. So who we got here, Sam? Well, right here we got the, uh, the grave of Tom Biggers. Now, uh, Mr. Biggers, we don't know how he got his name, but they said he, had, he was the biggest. We don't know uh, what was big about him or, or uh, what the was biggest the biggest. Guy, he was the, the biggest, biggest guy but around. I think this might tell you exactly. You might get some idea here. Right here we have, you know, uh, where the Kearns is buried. Now, Mr. Kern, he made that uh, famous jam and jelly stuff, uh, Kern's Jellies. Good stuff, I use it on my toast today. He's not around, but his jam is. And uh, boy, you should come here. It's, it's so exciting to visit these uh, grave sites. You're just gonna have yourself a heck of a time. And uh, I'm gonna turn you over to Rob right now, and he's gonna get us out of here because I think I need some help. So, uh, Rob, take it away. And, well, it's and been real interesting. It's been real interesting, right Sam. Thanks. Sam Sturgeon is a hell of a tour guide, I'd like to say. But, uh, so this is Rob Cheatham and Sam Sturgeon here at Grave Sites for Terminal Travel. Come on down and get terminal. <laughs> Do you know any Libras? Yeah. I know two or three that I can think of. How would you describe them? They're pretty indescribable. They seem pretty stubborn and um, righteous. Always righteous. They always have to be right. And half the time they seem to be perfect and half the time they seem to be completely off. Have you ever seen the Now and Then show before? Yes. I like it because all the people on it I know. <laughs> and it's fun to see people on TV that you know. Have you bought any lottery tickets? No. No, I'm under 18 and you can't buy them if you're under 18. Thank you. Once more into the breach, here we are again. At this point in the show, we're going to talk to another very talented Libra artist. This is a man who is primarily uh, known for his ceramics work, but he's done a lot of other things too, and we'll ask him about those. I'd like to bring out Matt Rowland. Right now. Matty. Hi, Matty. How are you? Hi, Meg. Nice to meet you. Yeah, nice to Have meet you. Have a seat, me boy. Here. Yeah. Love your socks. <laughs> Great. Very sporting. Yeah. <laughs> keeping my feet alive. Yeah? yeah. Yeah. That massage keeping me alive. I'll tell you that was from wonderful. There, uh, yeah. You've experienced massage before, right? What do you mean from the year? <laughs> He's too fast for me tonight. Yeah, I gotta get my every week's worth. Yeah. Well, none of us like do, unfortunately. We should. You said sure, that you've never sure. had a massage. I've never huh? had a, you know, real professional. Boy, I tell you, you've got to do it. It's the great. It's the greatest. Oh, it's I will. wonderful. I mean, the obvious shows. You know, I mean, I'm just buzzing. Mm -hmm. Well, that's Feels great. good. Maddie, Bobby, what are you doing now? Are you still doing plates and, and pots? What are you doing? Ceramics? Yeah. Uh, not doing a lot of ceramics right now. Although I, I recently finished a show, so in the in the spectrum of three months, I've done some. But right now, I'm not really doing any. Well, tell us a little bit about the plate shows, which uh, we're going to have a tape of shortly here. But what, where did the concept of you're making plates and having guest artists decorate them come from? Was that your idea? Yeah, it was. Uh, it wasn't really an idea. It was sort of a necessity. Is how it was. I was experiencing a lot of frustration 
with my with the decoration of my work and uh, I invited a couple other people to work with me and do the decorating process and I was really happy with it and worked out really great and it just kept expanding and eventually uh, we expanded it to 20 or 25 different artists um, who would decorate the plates and from that we put together a show and it was real successful and we've continued it uh, on a yearly basis for the last three years. Okay, explain that a little bit when you talk about decorating the plates. This is not simply a matter of painting a plate with some kind of paint. This is a little more complicated than that, right? So it's kind of explain for the people what the process is. Well, you could use any number of processes. The one that we used specifically for the plate show was called an overglaze stain. And it essentially was we'd lay down a base of glaze on a plate form and then the artists would paint but with using a glazed stain and then when we fired it the stains would fuse into the glass and permanently color the glass where the stains were laid down. Okay, so you kind of have to be careful with the, the base plate that you provide that you don't scratch it or mess up the, the, the surface of it because that's actually a, an unfired glaze itself, isn't that right? Yeah, yeah, I mean, you, you know, people had a tendency to want to be real specific about what they were doing. Uh, and things were a little delicate and you know and it wasn't that delicate I mean if people didn't like what they do we'd wash it off and do it again so you've had three shows to date now right the yeah play you're planning to do another one uh, I'm not sure I'm not sure we'll, if it, we'll see if what it, happens, it comes it up happens. in the winter you know it's a long ways off <laughs> winters are like that three, yeah. three, three four five ten twelve months you know okay so the first show was at Le Voyage yeah. Right. And the second one was made in Mendocino. Mm -hmm. And then the third one, which was this last, earlier this year, right? Or was it last yeah, year? Yeah, it was this was year. It this year, right? And that was at the Highlight Gallery in, yeah. in Mendocino. So each time it's gotten a little bigger and a little more magnificent in, in a way of speaking. Yeah, sort of. Although the first one was rather... More fun? Big. Yeah, it, it had an initial... Uh, I don't know what it was. There was a certain impact to the first one that was pretty wonderful. Well, it was, a, it was a first. Yeah, it was the first. It was great. It was also in my own gallery. And <laughs> the things were really a lot different. You know, the, the whole way it was presented and the attitude. And so if your incentive was economic, it makes sense to have it in your own gallery. Right? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I don't even know if the economics was the incentive. I think things were a lot looser. You used to do some real exotic things in terms of ceramics and, and just decorative arts in general. I remember you did the, uh, the set for Lion in Winter and decorated the entire theater with these great furs and bones and clay things. I mean, it was an extraordinary set decoration, and you've done that with, with other things. Are you uh, planning on doing more of that? Yeah, probably. Because I, I miss know, it. it. I miss that. Yeah, a lot of people have said that. I hate to call it hippie funk, but it was, it was, it was hippie sort funk, of like that. But it was hippie funk, you know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, it, I'm sure I'll do more of that type of work. You know, I hope so. I, really I really intuitive done a few stuff things. coming out of you that I, I thought. I just really liked that work that you did. Back then, yeah. yeah. Feathers and bones and all that neat organic stuff and put together in, in wonderful ways. It was yeah. real extraordinary. Yeah, the, I think maybe the town was more that way then too, or the environment that I was around. So living in Mendocino has changed your approach to your art. Yeah. I, I think I think the you know, obviously the people here have changed in the last twelve years and and I think what I do is uh, probably a reflection of that. Why is that? Uh, just, you know, the influences I get from what's happening around me. You know, the, uh, I think that uh, 12 years ago, we were into hippie, funky art. <laughs> and, uh, you, know, now, now, you know, now we're not doing that much anymore. Right. And what are you doing right now? Nothing. <laughs> no, I really enjoy doing nothing. Maddie's my next door neighbor. And I can verify that. Uncle Bob. <laughs> Uncle no, Ed Bob. You are you are raising two gorgeous little kids, however. Yeah. You know, that, that's almost a full time job. Yeah. That that's uh that's my goal accomplished in Mendocino. All right. And you play a little basketball from time to time. Yeah. Playing playing a lot of basketball these days. Play in the sandbox. Play in the sandbox. What else am I doing, Bob? <laughs> I don't know. Let's, uh, let's take a moment here to uh, take a look at the tape from the first of the plate shows. This was at the Le Voyage Gallery, which was Maddie's gallery. And uh, after we've had a look at that, we'll be right back. So let's, let's cut to the, uh, to the tape. Tape is ready? Go.
Okay, there we were. That was the uh, the plate show at Le Voyage. And uh, how many artists did you say there were in there? Twenty five. Uh, there's about twenty five in that show. Yeah. And those were those were were uh, kind of a broad spectrum of Mendocino. A lot of local kind of around Mendocino graphic artists, uh, visual artists, painters, printmakers. Uh, isn't, isn't that true of the latest two shows, though, too? Or yeah, they're all that way. That's they're what I thought, yeah. Yeah, except we do. I, I have been trying to expand it a little, <laughs> seeing if I can get more sculptors to work on them and see what kind of influence they have when they apply themselves to, to painting. Yeah, but you could, is there any way you could do a sculptural plate without... I mean, you'd have to do that right from the clay <laughs> basis up, I guess, wouldn't you? Yeah, the people are starting to get more involved in that pro part of the, part of that the process, That sounds like too. fun. Yeah, actually, actually, now that I think of it, uh, I do have some commitments coming up in the near future to work with some people on clay for an upcoming show. All right. Yeah. It's not, it's not confirmed, but it may be in the spring. Good. Well, I'd like it. to point out that I think it's wonderful that you are so you into working basically as a team and with other artists, and that is is a Libra kind of. Trait, right? Yeah, you did the research. Right. Well, okay, that is a Libra <laughs> sort of thing. They like sure, to. Sure, why not? We'll they there. can um, really appreciate talent in others and really love it. And I know well, Maddie's always been that way. Well, that's great. Great, Maddie. Yeah, all right, Bob. A bet. genuine Libra. <laughs> Yeah, a lot. I, I do like doing associated arts a lot. That's that's mostly what I do. I, I have uh, a difficult time sitting in the studio day after day by myself, and uh, it gets real ho hum. So oh, yeah. it's real nice to get involved with other people. Well, you've always that's been great. generous in that way, and I know that's opened up a lot of other artists in the community to doing associated work, to, uh, joint work. Uh oh, uh -oh look out! Oh, oh wow! Oh. Can you dig it? Yeah, I will. Bobby's birthday. Well, yeah. Can you see this thing? Is this wonderful? Happy birthday, all you Better a Libra than a zebra, it says. Okay, well, I, I guess that means the end of the normal part of our show. <laughs> and in a minute here, we're going to get crazy with Richard Fienbop, but uh, why don't you guys join me in blowing out these candles for the sake of all the Libras. Happy birthday, you Libras. Okay. Yeah, you guys can blow too. Go ahead. Everybody Ready? blow. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, all right. Uh-oh. Good work. Eight o'clock rock. Nine, ten, eleven o'clock, twelve o'clock rock. We're gonna rock around the truck tonight. Put your bad bags on. Join me home. We're gonna have some fun when the clock strikes one. Rock around the clock tonight. Rock, rock, rock till the broad daylight. Rockin' and rollin' around the clock tonight. Will the clock strike two, three, and four? If the band slow down, we'll yell for more. Rock. Around a clock tonight, rock, rock, rock till the broad daylight. Rocking out and rolling around the clock it's a night. Will the time strike five, six, and seven? We're gonna be in seventh heaven. Rock around a clock tonight, rock, rock, rock till the broad daylight. Rocking out and rolling around the clock it's a night. Rock it out with time. Eight, nine, ten, and eleven, two. Going strong, and so will you. Rock around and clock tonight. Rock, rock, rock till the broad daylight. Rocking and around and around the clock tonight. Will the clock strike twelve? Rest and then rock right around the clock again. Rock around and clock tonight. Rock, rock, rock till the broad daylight. Rocking and around. Night. One more time. Mm -hmm. 
Two at a clock, strike twelve. Wrestling there, right around the clock again. Rock, rock, rock tonight. Rock, rock, rock tonight. Rock tonight, just rocking and rolling around the clock tonight. Richard, go for it, man. Let's dance. <laughs> One, two, three, four. <laughs> to fooling you honey now that's quite a different subject don't let my glad expression give you the wrong impression cause really i'm sad oh sad i'm sad and i hurt and i want you so bad and that's why i appear to be glad oh and there's some sad things known to man tis too much sadder than the tears of a clown when there's no one around Said, oh yeah, baby Oh yeah, baby If I appear to be carefree It's only to come my flesh, my sadness In order to shield my pride I try to cover it up with a show of gladness Don't let my show convince you That I've been happy since you decided to go Oh, I need you so And I heard and I want you to know It's for all as I put on a show Oh, and there's some sad things known to man Just a too much sadder than the tears of a clown When there's no one around tonight's show and uh, you'll see the list in just a second we'll see you on the next now and then show bye-bye bye. thanks again
Are you a native Californian? I am a native Californian. Well, that's good. Have you bought any lottery tickets yet? No, I have not bought any lottery tickets. I don't think I will. Why not? I'd just rather spend my money on something else, I guess. I don't feel like I'm very lucky winning lottery tickets. Uh-huh. Are you a Libra? No, by I'm any not, chance? No, I'm not a Libra. I'm do you a know, Cancer. Do you know any Libras? Um, I'm sure I do, but I don't even know which month a Libra is. Oh, it's October. Oh, uh, well, then I'll be say I do know a Libra in October. It's Michael Evans. Michael Evans is a great guy. Some, some, people, some people tell me that you know, I haven't seen him in a while, so I guess he's changed if he's a nice guy. <laughs> <laughs> what do I say to that? <laughs> no, actually, let me take that back. Michael Evans has always been a nice guy. He, maybe it's because he's a Libra, don't you think? I don't really put any uh, credit to those kind of things. <laughs> Mike, what am I going to ask him now? You know, what is it like about Mendocino? Something like that. Okay. You live in Mendocino? No, I used to live in Mendocino about uh, two, about two, two and a half years ago. I, I left here in '82 and went to South America for a year, and then I moved back to Manhattan Beach, which is near LA, and and I went back to South America again this summer, and I just moved back to the city and San Francisco, that is. And I came back here to visit some old friends, and I ran into you two people doing interviews on the street. How does it feel to be back? Hey, I love Mendocino. The weather's nice. A lot of people in town. A lot of great people. Yeah, you should move back up here. Well, maybe I will. All right. <laughs> Will the clock strike two, three and four at the band slow down? We'll yell for more. Rock around the clock tonight. Rock, rock, rock till the broad daylight. Rocking and rolling around the clock it's a night. Will the time strike five, six and seven? We're gonna be in seventh heaven. Rock around the clock tonight. Rock, rock, rock till the broad daylight. Rocking and rolling around the clock it's a night. Rock it out with time. It's eight, nine, ten, and eleven, two. Going strong, and so will you. Rock around and clock tonight. Rock, rock, rock till the broad daylight. Rocking and around and around and clock tonight. Will the clock strike twelve? Rest and then rock right around the clock again. Rock around and clock tonight. Rock, rock, rock till the broad daylight. Rocking and around. Night. One more time. Should the clock strike twelve? Rest in there. Rock right around the clock again. Rock around the clock tonight. Rock, rock. 